and they put a much bigger boiler on this because I have a larger space than they would do in a typical uh, van. So I think it's double the size. It is a massive boiler and I will go on record because this is allowed to be said that it is actually a tank heater. They use it in tanks. I now have a tank heater heating my dining house. All right, everybody, what is going on? In today's video, we're gonna go a little bit of uh, the tiny house building is what we're gonna go down. And I'm not going to show the entire install because one, I'm not allowed, and number two, it's rather boring. So we're gonna talk um, to the people that are installing it, which happens to be the owners of Van Life, or owner, I should say, of Van Life Tech. Now, he's not here with me right now. They went to go pick up uh, another person that is uh, part of their team. Now, I've had Troy on my channel before a couple other times to show him on what he does with Van Life Tech. This is all of the Van Life Tech stuff that is here behind me on this table, and I'm gonna show you a little bit what they have started. Now, I decided to go with the Van Life Tech system because I know it really well. I had it in my van, and this tiny house is a very large scale van, pretty much. It is eight feet wide by 24 feet long. Standard van, like a 144 Sprinter, 10 feet by six feet. I asked Troy if I could put the radiant floor heating system that he has developed for vans into a tiny house. And of course he said, yes, he can absolutely do that. Put in the all the tubing for the radiant floor heating. Now, radiant floor heating Hydronic radiant floor heating, I should say, is different than what a lot of other people that say they put radiant floor heating in, which is like a heating pad. I turn to where the experts are and I wanted to pay him for his services. So luckily enough, I am friends with Troy and I have showed him a lot on this channel where he uh, paid for himself to come out here and do the install for me. So thank you to Van Life Tech for that matter. So down here, it's a little dark right now. We're gonna show it more off tomorrow, but that is the heater. And the heater is a, like I said, a bigger version of what they put into vans. Now I'm told, I think Troy or Cody, one of them told me that that thing will pump out 24,000, 27,000 BTUs, but I'll get the exact numbers for everybody when I show the video tomorrow and all of it is going to live right there in that cabinet this is obviously going to be my front door even though it's on the side of the tiny the radiant floor heating and the air and, and that's also oh, oh by the way and this is also the hot water as well so it is a three-stage system floor heating blower heat as well as hot water now i'm building my tiny house as a completely off-grid capable unit that is going to be completely self-sustained and I wanted a really powerful, robust heater as well as access for hot water for showers or to wash your hands or washing dishes or things like that. So having Troy system for me was probably the best idea because I wanted it completely off-grid or self-sustained inside of this eight by 24 foot space. All tiny houses are different and vans are different, right? And it's however you want them to be. I wanted luxury. This is, in my opinion, a luxury product. Is it necessary? Is it needed? Probably not. But I wanted a better heater than what you see on a traditional tiny house, which would be like a mini split system. Now everybody will say, oh, the mini splits are great because they can do heating and cooling. And that is true. But I actually talked to Troy about this today and I knew this, but I wanted to hear it from more professional mouths was, the traditional mini splits, when you get down to about 30 degrees, give or take Fahrenheit, then they actually are not that efficient. I know for a fact, Troy's system can handle like negative 40 degrees. It's been tested and it's been proven that that is actually correct. I'm going to have this in the mountains of Maine and now they're not very large mountains, but they're still mountains. And it does get rather cold in the wonderful state of Maine. They went out to go pick up uh, their other colleague at the airport, but we're taking the rest of the night off. It is the end of the day, and we are going to pick this up tomorrow. Here we go. Just went to the hardware store, got some distilled water. We're gonna walk inside right now, and I got a bunch of other stuff. 
The thing about doing custom jobs like we're doing is there is like when you walk into a hardware store and they always ask you, hey, what are you doing? It's hard for you to say, well, I'm building a tiny house and we're putting in a heater that really isn't supposed to go into tiny houses. I mean, it is, but it isn't. And like we're putting in a tank heater into a tiny house. So when you try to explain that to somebody that works at a hardware store, they're like, what? Same thing with van building, bus building, tiny home building. It's all custom. These guys are working hard. Yep. I'm gonna get you on camera, oh, see if yeah. he actually likes the stuff, because I don't think he's gonna like it. Oh, let's see what he's got here, man. Right. So, the guy, the guy at Ace gave me this one. Oh, that'll work. Is that too big? That'll work. Okay. I think. Okay, that's that's the weird tape that I didn't know what it was, that's so I bought a couple. I bought two different tips of tape. I, like, I don't know if those will work. I like both of them. Okay. I like both of them. <laughs> He's just being nice, guys. Oh, look at that. Little guys. Yeah, yeah about three eighths and half. Okay. I'll we'll probably use them all. So these guys are holding the fuel line as well as something else, right? Another line? Yeah. Uh, and then we needed a custom clamp for that, so we actually bought... This is actually made for PVC piping, I believe. Six bucks, guys. So at the end of the day, you pay six bucks, and boom. That works. There you go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Well, after three glorious days, I'm just kidding, it didn't take that long. Two, two hour, like a couple of days. Yeah, it was like, it was, the first day was like maybe two and a half, three hours. Second day was like maybe two and a half, three hours. We had to go to the game. We went to the baseball game, so check that out. birthday present to me from my dad to go to the game I told them I was going to the game and then the guys bought tickets because they were gonna be in town doing this for me so I also didn't film much because um, well the process of this whole entire ordeal is kind of boring <laughs> I mean yeah. right yeah. right these guys are great where it's kind of like I'm not gonna get in their way and there's too many cooks in the kitchen but it is rare that I'm gonna have the owner of van life tech and the, I'm gonna call you GM, even though I don't know what your actual title is. General manager, Cody over there. Sorry, I just gave him the general manager title. Yeah. Okay. Troy is pumping glycol in there. Yeah, we are filling this thing up. Is it always, uh, is it always dyed orange? Yeah, so we use a non-toxic propylene glycol for a couple of different reasons. This is actually a special mix with anti-corrosion inhibitors in it. So you're pumping the glycol into your expansion tank right there, and then the expansion, I think, right? Nope, we're- Okay, well, I was way off. No, nope, it's okay. Uh, we have a, coming across from hydronic heating, we have what's called a fill and purge assembly, so that the, you'll notice this is a forced fill with the pump. Okay. And so what we're actually doing is we're forcing all of the air out of the system. And with this forced fill, the system will run almost silently because there won't be any air in it. I'm in a tiny house right now. However, I'm putting a van heating system. I put that in quotations because that's what Troy designed this to be in was inside of a mobile vehicle, a van. Well, I'd say maybe more or like, yeah, okay, I'd agree with that. Uh, but we just do mobile heating. So yeah. this is an upsize system because of the additional like square footage and the additional heat loss of, a, of this size building, right? So, yeah both the amount of tubing in your floor, the system volume, and the BTU capacity of the boiler that we used. So it happens to still be decent for you because you want it to be fully off-grid. I did. Decent powered, it's great, I love it. Thank you. But yeah, so you just try to, you know, you try to do building envelope calculations, whether it's for a van, a boat, a house, a mobile home, and then you size your heating appliances, your boiler, your tubing, your fan coils, all the things that you're doing to deliver the heat based on what the heat loss of the size building is and the type of insulation, all that kind of stuff. He actually did offer me a propane boiler. I did. And the propane boiler, you need it to be 120 volt. And that would have been fine because I have a huge 6,000 watt inverter. However, uh, we t him and I talked extensively about it, which 
what would be the pros and cons to either kind of both using either a de uh, diesel or propane. And we both agreed that kind of diesel was the way to go. I will have a diesel tank that I, you know, put onto the tongue of the vehicle. And again, I wanted a fully self-contained tiny house. Gee, he's really awkward on camera, isn't he? <laughs> Good looking dude, just, you know, awkward on camera. I just, I'm off camera. <laughs> Cody, did you have fun at the game? He did. Yeah? It was a good time. Do you have adult cool. beverages? <laughs> Just a few. Maybe two. It was only one. One beer and one whiskey. Yeah, that's all you needed. At a time. <laughs> At a time. At a time. I have been telling them that they need to get into the tiny house game, yeah, tiny house market. Here. This will be the... Is my the first or second? Of tiny the VL house? VLT in the tiny house. I think the second. Your heating system is in a several vans. I would say a solid hundred at this point. Uh, three hundred. Is it three hundred? So you have three hundred VLTs on the on the road. Now, we've gone through several polar vortexes over the last couple of years. Has your system held up? Yeah, I mean the ratio that we mix this in, uh, it has uh, non-heated, like just freeze burst protection to negative fifty. So five, what that though. means is if you were not heating it, it was just sitting out in the woods and you had like winterized it and you were just leaving it sit, it could get negative 50 and it wouldn't burst. By the way, I'm also recording this probably at the worst time because they need to actually concentrate on what's going on. As you can see, you're, you're doing great. You're, you're doing great. <laughs> uh, we are gonna, I'm going to cut this right now. We're going to pick up later when we can talk to Troy when he's kind of cleaning up and you know, whatever. <laughs> Cody keeps walking in and out because the boiler is actually outside and they put a much bigger boiler on this because I have a larger space than they would do in a typical uh, van. So I think it's double the size. It is a massive boiler and I will go on record because this is allowed to be said that it is actually a tank heater. They use it in tanks. They use it in tanks. I now have a tank heater heating my tiny house. They are getting on an airplane right now, so they are getting uh, ready to get out of here, but we are cranking, we are keep cranking. It's about eight hours it took uh, for it to be all installed and everything, but they also had two and a half people working, because Joey, actually three, Joey was here helping a lot, uh, but he came in towards the end is my point. I laid down the floor, and now I've got hydronic radiant floor heating. If you can give a two minute description on why a hydronic system is better than an electric heating pad, Maybe I think the audience might want to know that one. Okay, so tile warming or electric warming mats, uh, we can call them that, floor warming mats. They're great in your bathroom, warm the tile up, um, and you're feeling that tactically on your feet. But as far as BTUs, if you read on any one of those, 12 volt or 120 volt or 220 volt, they're gonna give you a watt, watts per square foot output of the mat. It's usually between nine and 13 watts per square foot. You end up with one watt equals 3.14 or 3.41 BTUs. You do the quick math there, you're getting about, well if it's 10, you get 30 watts a square foot maybe. Mostly, we did that calculation the other night as I was showing you this, right? Yeah. With the square footage of this floor, you'd be able to put about 7,000 BTUs in here with floor warming mat, okay? Correct. You run the heat loss calculations on this envelope in your climate and with the type of insulation and construction you've done, it's more like 30 to 40,000 BTUs of the heat loss. So you're, you're physically not gonna be able to get enough BTUs out of the warming mat to heat the space. So we flip over to this. Um, in this hydronic setup, we're doing about 70 BTUs a square foot out of your floor. We're delivering that with the hydronic, which warms all of the objects in the room. Yes. Right? And then mostly, I mean, electric would do that too, depending on how long you had it on, right? Uh, but with this, we're, we have a 40,000 BTU boiler, about 42,000 BTUs. So we've sized that boiler to heat your space and then we supply the heat via the hydronic floor and the hydronic radiators so that we're able to deliver the BTUs of that boiler that's matched to your space. And for the people that use electric mats, we're not hating on you guys whatsoever. It's fine. You want to use electric warming mats, that's totally okay. Typically you're going to need to use some sort of heating, other heating source I would presume, whether it's a mini split or something along those lines. Yeah, or I mean, you have to just do the heat loss calculations for the envelope, right? Right. Whatever it is, whether it's tiny home, houseboat, um, fan. Because on that same thing, to supply those 7,000 BTUs, we figured out that even though you have, how many, how many amp hours of batteries do you have? 
watt hours, 30, 30 kilowatt hours, so 30,000 30, watt hours. Okay, and we did the math the other night. We, we found did. out that you could run an electric tile warming system for... It was like 13 hours? I think it was 18. Okay, like 18 that, hours, yeah. Anyway. But without running anything else in the house. Without running anything else, and then how do you refill 30 <laughs> kilowatt hours? You have to do that via sun. Where you're in an off-grid situation. Because I, and I got 3,200 watts of solar on the roof. And so from dead to full, it would be about 10 hours to recharge the entire battery on optimal sun. Right, and you get about four hours of optimal sun per day. Per day, so it would probably take about three days of peak sun conditions, which you're only going to use your heating mat predominantly in the wintertime, which you're looking at way longer. You're looking about maybe four or five days. Because you have way less sun available. So yeah. And anyway, you start, to, you start to see how it, how it migrates across that, right? Best part about this is also a low voltage system. Yours, uh, because we went diesel, I am now running it off of a 12 volt system. So your heater's technically 24, controller pumps are 12, um, and your battery system's 48. So yeah, you it's got, all messed you got up. A lot going in here. We, we uh, luckily, not only is he a hydronic heating expert, he's also, uh, you know, went to school for new, renewable energy. He knows a lot about electrical, low voltage stuff. Uh, what do you want to say about Van Life Tech? Because I know that you guys uh, are kind of growing rapidly. Van Life Tech, we're just super happy to do this for you. You know, we have our core kits for all of the vans. We can also do boats. We also do tiny homes. Uh, we do custom projects. We've been actually doing a bunch of LMTVs. Well, I also, I, I mean, I've been begging you to get into the, the tiny house market. I really feel that this is an untapped market for especially your, what you guys do, like what you have, what you have available. And also, I mean, like vans, a lot of people want to build their own tiny home, but, you know, we're kidding it. So we can, you know, our stuff is engineered to be able to drop ship via FedEx or UPS. So, so could somebody DIY what you did today? Like, I wasn't going to do it, but yeah. yeah. Or you could have an upfitter come out and do it. Yep. Technically, anybody that's completed our upfitter training would be able to do a tiny home as well as a van. Yeah, the way that's the awesome. The core kit goes together is the same. So. He's one of my good friends, guys, but I'm excited to just have his system in the house because he was one of my first calls I made to get that heating system in this house because I wanted to be comfortable. And, and truly, I mean, whether it's a van, a motorhome, a tiny home, a boat, like what makes it feel like home is being able to be warm even when it's cold outside. I agree. Like, I mean, I'm sorry. I think heating is probably the the most important thing because I'm a snob. So <laughs> uh, I, I mean, wanted heat and power. That's what you want to sit down and have a cup of tea and read a book. You don't want to be hanging out in a puffy under like a in a sleeping bag in here on, like with your heat on. Being home is different than camping. And this is your home. This so. is my home. That's exactly right. I can't say it any better than that. So, dude, I appreciate you. I mean, this is the setup. That that is a holding tank. Everybody, that is not. A, a actual boss, I mean it is. Well, in this case, we actually set it up for both. So since Jared is gonna have, um, he's gonna be off grid on his solar, one of the nice things you can do is when your batteries are fully charged and you have extra power, you can set this up to just be a dump load. So you basically get free electric water heating. Um, we left the element, the 110 volt element in place in this and it'll function like a normal water heater, like it does. And then we've also tied it into the diesel system um, so that the diesel system can heat the water in there um, just as easily. So he can actually go either way. He can either go 110 volts and set it up as a dump load off of his solar when his batteries are fully charged, uh, or if it's been a cold gray couple of weeks and you're getting low on voltage, you can just hit the button and it'll automatically heat that Kick tank the off. Diesel the diesel off. Or if I'm running out of diesel and I'm just too cheap to refill my diesel. We are recording this uh, at the end, very, very, very end of April, so we're gonna just say May. I hope to have this completed and done and moved by July or mid-July. So I got two months uh, to get everything done. I have to because I have to be out of the space. So I'm gonna see if he can come back out and maybe kind of just hang out on the land, maybe camp out with me. Maybe I wanna get some friends out there just because I wanna have like a land warming party. So maybe Troy and, and Cody and Joey will come back out and we can just hang out, man. Sure. Uh, I can't thank you enough, buddy. Hey man, I'm happy we're to gonna, do it. We're gonna talk more it's about been... this whole thing and and fun kind of why I did it and all that stuff. And it's been just fun to see your journey. So glad we could be in Thanks, man. It's fun. We're going to get emotional and cry on you guys. I could run through the fire. I could conquer.